guys good morning it's now 10 47. i was due to do my live over on friday but then i got a bit distracted so i thought let me do it today hi guys how's everyone doing hello good morning it's a beautiful day today i've just come out for a drive i'm now parked up outside my sister's house we're supposed to be going out into london today so I'm ready. I'm hoping they're all ready. So I'm going to be on live for a little while um, and hope that everyone is ready to leave by the time I'm done with this. My day is really good. Thank you, Rajiv. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm ready to have a good day out in the city. Do you guys have any driving related questions? Let me know. Driving lessons, driving tests, anything I can help you guys with. I pass on Tuesday one minor. Oh, brilliant. Well done, Vikram. That's really good. Hello from South... South Australia. Oh wow. What's the time there, Daniel? What that is it, Daniel? Uh, Daniela? Oh sorry, Daniel. Sorry. <laughs> I like all your videos. Thank you. Good luck with your theory test. With theory test, be sure to flag up any questions you're not sure about and go over those flagged questions later. Um because the bulk of it, because they give you like 57 minutes, I I think, right? The bulk of it, um, you'll be able to do those questions within sort of 20 minutes. But then the rest of that half an hour, you want to go over those flagged questions. So that's the best thing to do. And with the um, hazard perception, a lot of people, a lot of learners tend to click too early. So when you see a hazard, you don't need to just think, if I would have to break for that hazard right now, do I? that's when it's kind of affecting you. So if you feel like you need to break for that hazard, then click. So, for example, if you see a bus over in the distance parked up or kind of broken down, you can see that really early, but that doesn't necessarily affect you at that point. So, yeah, click when that hazard starts to develop. And normally I'll click three times. So click when you kind of see it, click when, it, when you get a bit closer and then click again. But don't repeatedly kind of spam. Thank you, love the outfit. Thank you. It's a bit hot. I, was, I didn't want to wear shorts, but kept it cool. How can we get your driving lessons? Um, I hope the videos are honestly useful because I'm not doing driving lessons like that as such. I'd only have a select few pupils that I do lessons with because I honestly don't have the time to be able to do as many as I'd like to. Driving in the UK is a nightmare. <laughs> um, it can be, it depends where you're driving, but um, yeah, there are a lot of hazards here, especially in the cities, it's just very, very hectic. Good morning how can i become more confident on roundabouts keep practicing obviously practice makes perfect but when it comes to roundabouts try and have a nice approach because when you have a nice approach it will give you as in like your speed it will give you more time to be able to assess decide and act on what you see and then when you enter be sure to count your exits out loud that's the great way to kind of stay on track um and as as you know with the 12 o'clock rule depending on where your exit's located position accordingly and if that's not the case then there will be clear road markings and signs i have driving license for five years but i still watch your videos thank you um if i have a driving license is it difficult to get there again when it comes to another country it depends like you obviously have to get used to the rules and regulations of where it is you intend to get your new license um but yeah as long as you can drive safely that's the main criteria so the like passing the test in the uk you have to make sure you're driving safely so a lot of the times you guys see these videos there was um learner drivers or experienced drivers kind of around here but then you also get people from outside wanting to convert their license over i've had a few from the us even yeah i'm a new learner and my driving instructor told me that i can move the car with just the clutch but always tells me to press the accelerator a little bit is that a really big deal um with that obviously whenever you're moving off try and have a nice balance so if this is the clutch and this is the accelerator when you're trying to move off you want to lift the clutch and gently press the accelerator it's like a half and half um diesel cars have more torque so you'll find that it's quite easy to just get that movement without having to press the accelerator and with more modern cars they auto rev so even when you're just lifting that clutch alone you'll get that movement but don't rely on that so that's why your your instructor is saying the right thing to actually press the accelerator at first as a learner it's quite difficult to do both together so try and get familiar with just kind of lifting that clutch and knowing exactly where that point is and of course if you're trying to move off fast that alone won't do it you need to use the accelerator but once you get familiar with where the biting point is use the accelerator and with the accelerator it's about 
the depth of a pound coin, about 1.5 on the rev count when you're trying to balance it. And as the clutch comes up, the accelerator goes down. I always tell my learners to treat it like two kids on a seesaw. So when you're trying to move off, the clutch is down, the accelerator is up. Now that you're trying to move off, you're going to lift the clutch and gently press the accelerator so you've got that half and half. Then there's the accelerator going down and the clutch coming up. And then when you're doing your gear changes, again, alternate. So you're kind of switching between them. Okay, what's this? Something about a passport? No, that doesn't. You have to, if, if you're driving in India, you need to um, do your test again here. You can drive for a year, but then after that, you'd need to do everything again. Can you tell me how to control the stress when it comes to taking off on a mountain road? Um, well, knowing exactly where the biting point is in your car, being familiar with that point and being able to balance it from that point. But make use of the handbrake, so handbrake on, prepare your feet. When you accelerate 1.5, lift the clutch up to the point where the revs drop and you hear the engine sounds different. When the revs drop, the, no the noise that the engine is making will change and you'll be able to feel the biting point because that vibration in your left leg. At that point, if you're on like a really steep gradient, you have to lift the clutch up a little bit higher than that point, otherwise you're gonna roll back. So a little bit higher, but hold that balance, then handbrake down. As soon as the handbrake goes down, you sh you're gonna do one of two things. Sorry, one of three things. You're either gonna go forward, which is the way you intended, so keep that balance. If you start to sort of idle, so you've now, you're on that gradient and you put the handbrake down, but you're not rolling forward or backwards, you're kind of just standing on the spot, then you need to keep revving but lift the clutch a little bit higher just to get that movement. And the third thing would be that you start to roll back, but you intend to go forward. So if you start to roll back, that means that your biting point is too low. You need to lift that a bit more. So at that point, it's quite easy to go, oh no, I need to brake. But no, it's not the brake. You need to just get that clutch up higher. Why do you make them do the emergency stop? The emergency stop is part of the driving test in the UK. Um, there's like a 50-50 chance of them doing it. You need, to, you need to demonstrate that you can stop the car quickly and safely. So with the emergency stop, there are two main parts. Firstly, the stop itself. So when the examiner says stop, you want to stop quickly. That's the main thing. You don't want to swerve. You don't want to indicate. You don't want to check your mirrors at that point because they're giving you that signal. They've done all those checks. So you simply need to keep your hands on the wheel, stop the car in the road as you are. That's the first step. Once you've stopped, normally just secure the car as you would on the side of the road. Then to move off, prepare the car, but this is the important one, check all around like so. As you may notice in these emergency stop videos, learners forget to look around, which, yeah, it's a very easy one. But um, yeah, I've honestly had about, I think two students in the past, I'm trying to think of how many years it's been, maybe about three, but probably in the last three, four years, I've had two, two of my own students fail for the emergency stop because they simply did not check around. They've just gone mirrors and drive off. So it is essential that you know to stop quickly and then look around before you move off. How do you drive a car on the highway? Well, you get up to the speed, match the traffic. Ooh, hi. God, the questions are a little bit too fast. Okay, one second. How do you... I don't... Guys, don't ask the same question over and over and over. Sorry. How do I book lessons? Um, I'm not doing lessons as such like that. Um, is electric car driving difficult for from a fuel car if it's manual? Any relation to the clutch and accelerator? Honestly, Sean, I don't know about that one because I've not really looked into electric cars that much. But um, if they're kind of hybrids, this is just me working off of using my brain right this minute. Um, it will be the same. I'm, I'm going to stop right there because I feel like I'm going to go off on a tangent with that one. What do you prefer, passenger princess or driving? Always driving. I do not like to be a passenger. And if I'm a passenger, I'm front passenger. I can't sit at the back. I'm going to be sick. It just feels like the longest journey ever. Have I ever been in a car crash? Yes, I have a very long time ago. Um, in my driving lessons, I think the last time I had a collision on a lesson was back in 2021. So two years ago. Touch wood. It's all good. No issues at the minute but yeah what is your time uh the time here is now 10 56 got my driving test in october 26 any tip for passing first time um when it comes to your driving test guys it can be really nerve-wracking and um you start to just panic rather than 
dealing with what you have right in front of you, try and take a few deep breaths before you get started. And the best way to do it, and this is my number one tip for anyone on their test, is just try and take it one road at a time. So think about how you're moving off from that st like stop position at the very beginning. Just do all your checks, do everything, kind of stick to your routine. Deal with that move off first. As you're driving down the road and the examiner says turn left, just think about what you need to do for that turn and just run yourself through that routine. So you're going, okay, I'm turning there, check my mirrors, then I'm gonna signal, now I'm gonna brake, now I'm gonna put the clutch down, now I'm slow enough, I'm gonna turn. So you kind of just look at what you need to do and just run yourself through that routine. My screen's gone black, I can't see it because I think the phone's getting a bit hot with where it is. Uh, can I make a video of how to drive at night? Um, yeah, sure, but I think the cameras would probably be a little bit too dark. I suppose I'd need to get the light, the correct lighting in the car. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into that one, definitely. Do you like to take a driving test? Uh, mock tests, they're okay. You never really know what to expect, really, what kind of driver you're gonna get. Any tips on parents teaching their children to drive? My daughter has her has had 40 hours with me and 10 hours with an instructor. God, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Uh, where's it gone? Thank you from Ipswich. Test booked in November. Um, well, the thing is, with, I, I, with family teaching um, new drivers, it's a little bit harder because you end up... Um, it, it's hard. It's harder to teach family. Like even I say that myself, even with my nephews, it was much harder to teach them than to teach a random learner. But you've got to trust that they know what they're doing and kind of sit quiet so that, that you actually just observe that first left turn or that right turn, these one, small little junctions. But of course, if they are approaching these junctions too fast, get them slower. So as a new driver, if an examiner was to look at um, a new driver on test, if that new driver is a little bit cautious, but they're doing everything safely, they're more likely to pass that driver. Whereas if you've got a young driver who's doing everything safely, but at the same time, they're taking risks here and there. So they're approaching some junctions a bit faster. It's just like, okay, well, this person has had 40, 50 hours of training, but they are taking those risks. And then you've got the other alternative where this person's a little bit cautious between these two. The examiner is more likely to pass the one that's a little bit more cautious just because as a new driver i'd rather you kind of gradually build up that confidence over time rather than be overly confident and take those risks because i'm concerned that you're going to get yourself in trouble i hope that makes sense so just um learning with family it a lot of the times it becomes driving a to b rather than just learning to drive so that's something you want to be mindful with as well am i, am I indian yes i am uh, what's my dream car? Um, I like this car that I have, but probably the A45. Oh my god. What do you do when an instructor is available? Is not... What the hell? Why is it gone? Is available for your... Oh, what do you do when, you're, when you haven't got an instructor available for your test? Well, you want to make sure you prepare for this really early because it's difficult to get a car last minute. Um, you can just you can just get provisional insurance on your family car and take that on your test but there are a few requirements like making sure you've got the mirror you've got the L plates but it really doesn't take too too much and it's not you know what insurance for a provisional um driver isn't actually that expensive so if you're not able to um so if you're, if you're not able to actually get a driving instructor you can just get insurance on one of the family cars provided it's the same transmission as what you intend to drive thereafter and yeah um, you Indian, can you please tell me how to become an instructor in the UK? Oh, well, you have to have a full license for over three years and be over 21. Apply, um, you can apply with the school and um, do a set number of hours, theory tests, practical tests and the other instructor tests. It's, it's a process of between six to kind of nine months, maybe even 12 months, depending on how much you're training, really. I saw you yesterday. Oh, wow. Okay, where was this? <laughs> How do you find a reliable instructor that doesn't cancel lessons last minute? Um, well, this is something that you'd speak to with the instructor beforehand. Just make sure that they know your availability. And um, yeah, it's just communicate this, this right at the beginning. And of course, if, if with, with booking a driving instructor, 
just try um, just to pay as you go rather than booking a, a block of 10 or 20, especially when you're just new to that individual. Um, when you're really happy that, yep, yeah, this is it, this is me done, then do a block payment rather than pay as you go because then you, you save a little bit of money. But um, yeah, have, um, have this discussion beforehand. Hope that helps uh, JG come to India and open a driving school. I don't have the time. Uh, turning right on a main road into a side road, a pedestrian is waiting to cross should you give way. So you're on a main road turning into a side road, you have priority from the main road to turn, but of course the pedestrian now has priority to cross. Eye contact is a must. If it's safe for you to turn, eye contact with the pedestrian. If they are waiting, just turn. If they start to cross when you look at them, wait for them and then turn in thereafter. What you don't want to do is invite them into the road, but let that decision be with the pedestrian themselves and then kind of go from there. So yes, pedestrians have priority, but if that pedestrian is waiting, then you have to just go yourself. So just put yourself in that pedestrian shoes. You're kind of waiting to cross this road now and you look at the road and you see a car that's intending to turn in. If you feel safe that, yep, they've seen me, then you're likely to cross. Whereas if you haven't got eye contact with that driver, you're likely to just keep on waiting. But of course, just make sure that that pedestrian is actually paying attention. Because a lot of the time, especially in the cities, you're going to see pedestrians just kind of walk straight into the road because they're distracted on their phone or doing something so if that pedestrian is looking waiting eye contact then it's safer to go whereas um, if they're distracted then you want to just wait for them what subjects did you take in a level uh maths graphic design uh biology and chemistry oh god where's it gone but yeah my my main thing was just art and graphics i wanted to go and study architecture at university which i applied to but then didn't go i got in started applying for accommodation and everything but then I was like no I don't want to do this hi I'm in your videos help me so much basically have my test coming up with Clover but my dog caused an injury to my hand oh wow one second this is hard to read I should be healed by the time I come to a test still do my test hope good luck hopefully your hand heals up in time favorite car ba uh, car band I don't even know what that means please stop spamming it back spamming oh well, I can't talk please stop spamming guys I'm trying to read it as as much as I can. How are mirrors important while driving? Mirrors are absolutely essential while driving. Now, if you're just driving in a straight line from your neutral position, kind of look into that top mirror every eight to 10 seconds. If you're driving on a dual carriageway or on a motorway, you want to check these two mirrors. So interior and the right hand side, because if anything happens while you're driving on that carriageway, you're going to need to move over towards the right into the overtaking position. Um, how long have you been a driving instructor? Um, intruder. Um, <laughs> I know you meant instructor. Um, I started back in 2012. I was 21 at the time. Um, so yeah, a long time. That's like 11 years. Oh my God, the other day I was telling someone, I was like, oh, I've been teaching for nearly 12 years. And I thought to myself, it's not 12, it's 11. I just turned 11. Yeah, my, my numbers are just getting ahead of me. Awkwardy a Punjabi, which should be ball. Um, I can, but obviously no one, no one would understand me. How do you check your blind spots when backing up? So when reversing, use your mirrors, but over your shoulders. Now what you can do is when reversing, you can sit slightly tilted like this. So instead of sitting flat straight, sit so that you're facing like tilted your hips towards the left. This will make it a lot easier to check that left blind spot and also to be able to look out the rear window itself. But of course, this is another thing to bear in mind. When you sit tilted like this in a manual car and your seat was adjusted according to your clutch leg, because you've twisted your hip round, your left leg will now be slightly stretched to press that clutch down. So bear that in mind because when you do that, you might end up lifting the clutch up higher than you intended and now you're, break, you're moving too fast. The guy spamming has got mad ADHD. Are you Indian? Yes, I am. You need to check home tour. Um, maybe later. I'm going to be doing a lot more on my personal channel. If you guys don't follow that already, it's linked in the rest of it. Um, I'm Indian. I'm Punjabi, guys. What advice should you give to learners pressured by drivers behind to drive faster even when they're probably doing the speed limit con constantly taking them even, oh, even when it comes off? 
can be dangerous. Okay, so you're a learner, you're driving along, you're doing everything safely, but the person behind you is kind of really pushing up behind. Know what they're doing, but don't drive according to what they're doing because then you don't want to go into something too fast. Going faster because the person's tailing you will only push that person to continue pushing you to go faster. And plus, you don't want to be going over the speed limit. That's obvious. Now, if they're really getting on your nerves and kind of really putting you on edge, try and find a space to just kind of move over to the side, allow them to get through, then get back into the road again. There are times where on lessons I've had to do this myself with students because it's just safer to just have that person go past us and not be distracting the learner rather than to keep on driving, noticing that, oh, they're, they're getting closer and I'm going to end up making a mistake because I'm focusing more on what's behind rather than what's right in front. Please drink water. I don't have water in the car. Um, it's probably because I'm talking too fast. Do you miss Saima? Yes, I do. Saima was an absolute star. I actually spoke to her yesterday. Uh, we're going to try and um, do a drive in her new car. So she's got a new car. She's been driving around and um, we're going to we're going to do a bit of driving in that car. And you guys can see that. And I actually haven't driven with her since her driving test. So it's it's been a while, but I'm so proud of her. She's done so well. Uh, I failed my test because of stop sign. Oh no! Yeah, we don't have many stop signs in, in the UK, but when you do, you've got to make sure you completely come to a stop, zero, then look, and then continue. You can't be um, messing around when it comes to stop signs because obviously it's there for a reason. It's because the view of the new junction is obscured, and even when you stop, you still can't see. Whereas a giveaway junction, you have a better. It's like an open-ish or like houses, but you can still see it's not like... So normally with a stop junction, it's the road's on a curve like this. So imagine it's a T-junction, but it's like this. So even when you get to the end, it's like, whoa, what is even going on? And that's your view, even at the end of the road. I truly love your channel. Keep doing the best. Uh, love from Kashmir. Thank you. I'm not taking new students, no, because I don't actually have time to be able to do regular driving lessons. That's why I'm trying to put out as much content for you guys as I can, because I feel like this is helpful because then you guys can come back and watch the parts that you need to see, improve on roundabouts or manoeuvres or emergency stop, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I'm 17 and soon we'll start driving. Any tips? My knees need to heal first um make sure that you truly understand what it is you need to be doing before you do it so don't start to don't you don't want to start driving and just going on main roads and everything without actually truly understanding how the mechanics of a car works how the car's moving off how you're stopping get the basics down and really kind of solidify them before you move on to the next step i was 17 when i got my license why do you like driving tests um they're okay how are you doing? Any fall lessons or winter lessons? Yeah, I, I'm I'm always doing lessons, just not as regular as I was before. All right, guys, it is now 10 past 11. I've been on live for a little while. Um, there is a YouTube video up today, which is with an experienced driver, with a learner driver at the back. Um, not as in there are a couple, but you know, <laughs> that will be up today. Uh, at 12.30 so you guys can see that it's going to be up as a premiere and um, I'll be typing along on the side so you guys can see it but I'm going to turn this off now so hopefully this has been helpful uh, can an Indian become an instructor in the UK does he need an international you need to have a UK driving license in order to become an instructor um, and I feel like it's probably three years again with that but yeah, um, my next trip to India is going to be in February. All my cousins want to get married, so there's two of them getting married. So it's quite a long trip. My plan is to try and travel around India, not just stay in Punjab this time around. While I'm out there, if you guys want to do a mock test and you're from India, let me know. <laughs> but um, it wouldn't really be a mock test there, will it? Because I don't really know the roads there myself and I don't really know what the regulations are. So yeah. But I'm going to turn this off now, guys, because it's getting really hot in the car and I'm going to go have some breakfast. I hope you all have an amazing day um, and enjoy it. We've got a nice bit of um, sun for this whole week. Thank you, guys. Bye. Let's figure out how to turn this off now.